Hey guys, so today we're gonna do a GPU buying guide for the month of April. If you guys remember last month, we did a March GPU buying guide. And while we really haven't had too many new releases, we have had a couple as well as big world events to affect future releases. So let's see what's good for the month of April. Now let's go over what changed from March to April and what we may recommend. Now the big news here of course is the worldwide issues that we've been going through. This issue is of course much more serious than GPUs, but just for the sake of theorizing we're going to talk about GPUs anyway just to pass the time. Basically a lot of new product releases have been delayed, not to mention people can't really gather anymore for keynotes and things of that nature. And then even more seriously a lot of people are losing their jobs and who knows how the future economy is going to be. This is all speculation so we're going to have to see what happens but basically Nvidia's 3000 series as well as AMD's big Navi I still think it's going to come before the end of the year but much later in the year and maybe it might be more of a limited release as well as AMD's big Navi GPUs. Now if you're in the position that you're still looking for a GPU and maybe you need one for a system you're staying at home more. A lot of people are being at home a lot more. Now a lot of people have been staying at home more just because you're going to be able to utilize it and use it a lot more now and it's actually safer to stay home at this point in time. So basically let's run down what's new and what recommendations have possibly changed. So first, as of course Nvidia has a lot more GPUs on the market, we're going to focus mainly on them. So let's talk about AMD and if whatever they have is worth it. Now we can talk about the low tier, mid tier, as well as the high tier. The AMD 5700 and 5700XT were previously kind of plagued with some driver issues where it made a lot of people jump to Nvidia. So basically at March's sort of GPU recommendations, AMD had just recently released some driver updates and now that we've had those for around a month I mean most issues have been fixed so the GPUs definitely seem to be performing very well. I never initially had too many issues I do have a 5700 XT um, now it definitely seems better the driver updates are better so I can sort of recommend them if you want to get an AMD card and of course they're very competitive pricing wise they're going to slot somewhere between the 2060 Super as well as the 2070 Super. 2070 Super generally of course will be faster but it is significantly more expensive. You can get these 5700 XTs for in the 300 range or something like that. So it's a great mid-tier card. Now since then Nvidia has released some new GPUs to be more specific, EVGA 2070 Super KO Edition, as well as the 2080 Super KO Edition. If you guys remember, previously EVGA and Nvidia had released the 2060 KO, which came in at about $299, and that's actually a really good price for a 2060. The KO Edition has some weird quirks about it that it actually works really well in workstation applications, a lot more than a regular 2060 would, and of course it's a regular 2060 in terms of gaming, and for 299 bucks, that's a pretty good deal, which is basically at their MSRP. And it's really not a bad price. These GPUs seem to perform really well. Um, they literally were just announced, so I haven't been able to test one or read too many reviews. So we'll hold off on a full-fledged recommendation of them, but just be aware that they're definitely out now and they seem to be priced pretty well. And we'll see what their performance is, but they definitely make it pretty appealing. So these AMD driver updates, as well as these NVIDIA GPUs that were just released, the KO or Knockout Editions, they're going to be pretty much the biggest changes. The other recommendations kind of still stand. If you're looking sort of at the high end, 2080 Ti is still going to be your best bet. Of course, at the very high end, the Titan RTX is still available, but the performance gains you get compared to the money you're going to spend really isn't all that appealing. I mean, you're more than good enough with a 2080 Ti, so I think that's definitely the high, high end to go to. And if you want to step down a little bit, I still think the 2080 Super, especially the these newer KO editions from EVGA and even the Founders Edition at $699. That's definitely the sweet spot sort of for the high end and the 2080 Super is definitely still high end. It's not quite like a 2080 Ti but it's going to perform fantastically well at 4K or even ultra wide like we have back here. And then of course stepping down a little bit, 2070 Super doesn't have too much competition. I mean the closest AMD card is 
going to be that 5700 XT, which of course is going to be priced lower, but the performance in a lot of games also not going to match a 2070 Super. And then things get a little more complicated when you reach sort of that mid-tier, because then you have the 5700 XT, you have the 2060, you have the 2060 Super. It's a little bit more of a difficult decision, but if you're okay with the driver issues that AMD has had in the past and you want to take a chance and hope that everything's fixed in the game that you're playing, 5700 XT still makes a lot of sense as a great performer in terms of the money that you're going to spend on it. And of course, I can always recommend the 2060 Super. I think it's a fantastic GPU for the price. Recently, I did a build with the 2060 Super, the EVGA XC Ultra. Very thick GPU. Cooling performance is amazing. I really liked working with that GPU. And of course, as we come down to that sub $300 range, you still have the 5700, once again, the regular version. I've seen them for as low as like 279 bucks, which that's really not a bad value proposition. Once again, if you're okay with possible driver issues. And then we have the 1660 Ti, 1660 Super. 1660 Super seems to be priced pretty well compared to even the 1660 Ti or something like that. So I still think that's a great GPU around that range. But of course, if you can step up to something like even a basic 2060 or the 2060 KO edition at 299 for a couple extra bucks, I think it really may be worth it as well as some features like ray tracing. Even though it's better to have a 2080 Super or 2080 Ti to take full advantage of ray tracing, you can sort of get in with some basic ray tracing with a 2060. So that's definitely a little bit of an advantage just so you see how it is. And it may be better optimized in the future and not as taxing or lower end hardware like it is now. So basically to summarize, if you wanna spend under $300, still get pretty good performance. 1660 Super is definitely still a pretty good GPU if you can find one for a good price. If you step up a little more around that low $300 range, you're going to be looking at a possible 5700, maybe even some 5700 XTs, you know, as low as like 350 or 360 if you can find them. And of course, the 2060 KO edition, that's a great GPU as well. And then as you get closer to that low $400 range, high $300 range, you're going to be looking at something like a 2060 Super, followed by a 2070 Super, possibly even that new KO edition. And then of course, the high end is wide open you're going to have the 2080 Super as well as the 2080 Ti with virtually no competition. Just basically Nvidia's own GPUs providing sort of their own competition. So to summarize, not too much has changed since last month. I think if you need a GPU now, I would go ahead and buy one because who knows when these new GPUs like the Nvidia 3000 series, AMD's Big Navi, we don't really know exactly when they're going to be released with all these worldwide problems. So if you're staying home a lot and you need a GPU right now, I would get one of these that I mentioned, the only new caveats from March to April pretty much going to be updated drivers for the 5700 XT, giving people a better shot at having a good GPU in that performance for the dollar wise, as well as these new EVGA 2070 and 2080 Super KO editions, which seem to be priced pretty well for the performance. Once again, can't fully recommend them just because they're so new. I haven't tested them. I have to read a few more reviews and see if they're really good, but at least judging from the surface, they look like pretty competitive in the market and definitely up for your consideration. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button. Hope you guys are all staying safe, staying inside, and I'll see you guys on the next video.